we are going to learn one very critical concept. And based on that, there are two questions. One is Pathfinder Rotational Motion MCQ 19. One is Pathfinder Laws of Motion 30. And one is from Calda Handout Problem Number 3. So these three questions we are going to solve based on this critical concept. So let us see. Let us start with the Laws of Motion. This one, this question MCQ 30. So question is, there is a massive bead. So this you can see. It is threaded on a long light rod, one end of which is pivot at point O. So this is hinged here. Initially, the rod is held horizontally and the bead is at a distance L. So you can see in the diagram, coefficient of friction between the rod and the bead is mu. Which of the following statements correctly describe the rela relation between angle theta that rod makes with the horizontal after the rod is released and time t? Right. So these are four options given. So if one is if mu is negligible, then theta is this, mu is finite, then theta is this, and C and D options are also that we'll see later. So now the very fundamental but most important concept for J advanced is that since rod is light, it is it does not have any inertia, right? So it, it does not have a tendency to register its state of motion because there is no inertia. So there will not be any normal force between the bead and the rod. Normally, why there is a normal force? Because when one body wants to move faster, another body is not able to do, able to move fast, then there is, because of the inertia, there is a normal force. Since this does not have any inertia, then there will not be any normal force between the bead and the rod, right? So let us prove the same point from the contradiction also. So let us assume that here, bead is here, and there is a normal force between the bead and the rod. So if normal acts like this, then if you draw free body diagram of the rod, so here hinge, hinge forces will be there. I have not shown hinge forces because I will not need that. I need only the normal force. So let us assume if there's a normal force between the bead and the rod, then normal forces like this. Now, if you see this normal force is going to provide torque about this axis, there is no mg, and then torque will be n into L. Torque equal to I alpha, if you write about this, then what you're going to get n into L is equal to I times alpha. Fine. So here, since this is almost zero, alpha will tend to infinity. So that's a contradiction. This cannot happen. But this can be achieved only when n is equal to zero. So I is zero will make force n to be equal to zero. Right. So this is a mathematical way of looking at the thing. Otherwise, if you understand inertia well, you can visualize that without inertia, there is no tendency to register. So there is no force. Now, if we apply the same point here, then what's going, going to happen here? See, in this now, since there is no normal, no force of interaction between bead and the rod, then there is no force on the rod as uh, on the bead as well, other than gravity. So if there is only gravity force acting on this, then bead is falling freely. So as the rod rotates, bead is going to fall freely. So bead is falling freely like this. You can see there is no other force, only mg. So acceleration of the bead is g downward. And this angle is theta. This distance will be half gt square. Ut plus half a t square, u is zero. And then 10 theta is going to be this distance by this 10 theta is gt square by 2 L, right? And this answer is irrespective of the mu. Mu is zero or mu is very large. It doesn't matter because there is no normal force. There is no friction force. So let us see now what all options are correct here. This is if mu is negligible, theta tends to this, right? This is right. Mu is finite, then also theta tends to this. This is also right because it is independent of theta. If mu is finite, theta is smaller than this by a finite amount, no, because its mass is almost zero. And this is of course wrong. So A and B are the answers, fine. So the same concept now, let us move to the next question. This question is uh, uh, rotational motion, question number 19 MCQ1. Now you can try this question after learning the concept from previous one. So here there are two small beads. You can see these two small beads. Again, on almost inertia less horizontal rod of length 2L. So this is 2L length. They are connected by a light inextensible rod of length, uh, cord of length 1.2L. So they're talking about this cord, string 1.2L. Initially, the beads are adjusted equidistant from the center of the rod, and the rod is rotating about its central vertical axis, you can see, at an angular velocity 1 by 3 radian per second. So this is rotating. At some point of time, the cord is cut and the bead begins to slide on the rod without friction, right? Here, friction is not given. Neglect the effect of gravity, which of the following statements are correct? 
So first two statements are the path of the bead from inertial frame is a spiral or a straight line. After that, we have to, in these two options, we need to find out how much time it's going to take when this bead leaves the rod, right? So again, the same, same concept, it is inertial S. Now, since rod is inertial S, there will not be any normal force between the rod and the bead, right? And it's well, since friction is, there is, it is smooth, so there is no question of friction. There is no normal force between the rod and the bead. Its velocity remains constant. So if there is no force on the bead from the rod, right? And we have to neglect gravity. So that means there is no force which can act on the bead from an inertial point, right? I hope you understand this point. So if there is no force on this, its velocity remains constant. Now, initially, when it is rotating like this, bead has had tangential velocity. So let us see from this diagram. Right now, the omega was like this. If omega is like this, then the bead had velocity in this direction. At this instant, cord is cut. So when cord is cut, since there cannot be any normal reaction between the bead and this rod, because rod is inertial less, massless, so there is no force on the bead, right? Same thing I, I'm saying again because it's very, very important. So what's going to happen now, if you stand here and see from inertial point, then it's going to move in a straight line. Its velocity is not going to change. So when the rod comes here, then bead is going to leave the rod, right? So how much, this is 0.6 L, this is L. So how much distance it will cover? 0.8 L. So how much time it will take? 0.8 L and the initial velocity. Initial velocity is R omega because this is 0.6 L. Omega is 1.1 by 3, and then you get 4 seconds is the answer. So let us see what all options are correct here. Path of the bead in an inertial frame is spiral. This is wrong. Path of the bead in an inertial frame is a straight line. This is right. The option is right. To leave the rod, the, rod, the bead takes 4 seconds after the cord is cut. That also we have calculated, right? So B and C are correct. If C is correct, D is of course wrong. Fine. So let us move to the next question. This is called a handout problem number 3. This question, massless. Uh, rods, massless word is not written. So that I have um, added here. So there are three identical rods that are connected by the hinges to each other. The outmost ones are hinged to the ceiling at point A and B. These are point A and B. The distance between these point is twice the length of the rod. So if this is L, this is 2L. Weight of mass M is hanged onto hinge C. You can see here, at least minimum how strong a force on hinge D is necessary to keep the system stationary with the rod CD horizontal, right? Here now, again, if rod is massless, another important application of the same concept we are going to learn now. Suppose that this is the rod. Then uh, if rod is massless, net force has to be zero, right? This we know. So if net force is zero, let us say there is a tension along the length. So this, if this is T, this has to be T. This will also be T, right? And suppose there are some tangential forces also like this, R1. Then this has to be R1 because net force should be zero. But then this is not possible because this R1 and this R1 will provide a non-zero torque. If you provide, and then rod is massless, inertial less. So if there is a non-zero torque, alpha tends to infinity. So this is not possible. This is only possible when R1 is equal to zero. So if it is a massless rod, then what can happen? Tension can act only along its length, fine? So this concept now we are going to use. So here from these hinges, whatever reactions are, we don't care about them. These all reactions will act along the rod, right? It might be like this also, might be like that also, but there will be along the rod. This much is sufficient for us to solve the question. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to extend this. And suppose this is point O. We are going to write now torque equal to I alpha about this point. So here, everything is internal. Only external forces are this F which will provide torque, this mg, which will provide torque about this point. And these hinge reactions also are external. But from this concept that along a massless rod, tension can be only along the length, this R1 and R2 cannot provide any torque about this point. Right? The line of action is passing through this. So that's it. Now we have to write torque zero about this point. So for minimum force, this angle should be 90. Otherwise, you can write, you can take angle theta and See that after that, for to apply the minimum force, you have to, you will get theta as 90. So this is 90. So talk about this is F into L. So this is 60 degrees, 60 degrees. This is 2L, this is L, this is L. And this is also L. Now you can see that this is 2L. This is also 2L because these two angles are 
60 degrees. So this becomes equilateral triangle. So F into L, this is L, and then Mg into this distance is L by 2. So F is equal to Mg by, Mg by 2, that's it. Now, this is a very, very critical concept. There are three questions we have solved. And then now, based on this question, all these three questions, right, little bit modification can be done in J advance or an entirely different scenario also can be given based on this concept. So it's a very, very important concept. I hope you have understood this well. If you have liked this analysis, please like this video and please share this channel with your friends also. Thank you.